suddenly, the Earth is not only not central to this solar system, but no longer central to any solar system. Wow. The Earth appeared and we be home at that point right at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. We weren't at the center of our solar system. At least our solar system was at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And the definitive disproof of it occurred only in the 1920s to give you an idea of how long it took for the Earthian ideas to reach galactic astronomy. And then there was the hope that, well, at least maybe our galaxy was at the center of all the other galaxies, all those many billions of other galaxies. But modern views have it that there is no such thing as the center of the universe, at least not in ordinary three-dimensional space, and we are certainly not at it. Those who wish for some central cosmic purpose for us, or at least our world, or at least our solar system, or at least our galaxy, have been disappointed, progressively disappointed. The universe is not responsive to our ambitious expectations. The grinding of heels can be heard screeching across the last five centuries as scientists have revealed the non-centrality of our position and as many others have fought to resist that insight to the bitter end. The Catholic Church threatened Galileo with torture if he persisted in the heresy that it was the earth that moved and not the sun and the rest of the celestial bodies. It was serious business. Now, at the same time, another of the Aristotelian precepts was challenged. That was the idea that except for the moving of crystal spheres into which the planets were embedded, nothing changes up in the heavens. 1572, there was a supernova explosion in the constellation Cassiopeia. A star that had previously been invisible suddenly became so bright that it could be seen by the naked eye. Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe noticed it. Uh, nothing changes up there. How is it that suddenly a star appeared? I mean, suddenly, in a period of a week or less, from invisibility to something easily seen, and then stayed for some months before fading away. Something was wrong. Just a few years later, there was an impressive comet, the comet of 1577, and Tycho Brahe, decades after Copernicus, had the presence of mind to organize an international set of observations of that comet. The idea was to see if it was down here in the Earth's atmosphere, as Aristotle had insisted it must be, or up there among the planets. Part of the reason that Aristotle had insisted that the comets were a meteorological phenomenon was his belief in an unchanging heaven. So, Brahe thought, if the comet is close to the Earth, and two observers, far from each other, can see it against different background stars. This is called parallax, which you easily can demonstrate by simply winking your eye, first with the left and then the right, with a finger propped up about a foot in front of your nose. The finger seems to move as you blink. Rahi reasoned that if the comet was very far away, then the two observers who were far apart would see it in almost exactly the same part of the sky. You could determine how far away it was by how much it moved between the two different vantage points, how much the parallax was. Rahi determined it was surely farther away than the moon and therefore up there in the planetary realm, not down here where the weather is. It was another upsetting discovery for the institutionalized Aristotelian wisdom. Now, as science has progressed, there have been, one after another, a series of assaults on human vainglory. One of them, for example, is the discovery that the Earth is much older than anyone had expected. Human history goes back only a few thousand years. Many people believed that the world was not much older than human history, and there was no sense of evolution, no sense of vast vistas of time. And then, the geological and paleontological evidence began to accumulate.